we'd be friends again. He wanted it. He always wanted it. Tom, I... I hope he's watching this and understands. He always understood, didn't he? He was a great man, Tom. People didn't always think so. But my father believed in him from the very first day he met him. That was years ago. But he still talks of that day when he drove to Dr. Arnold's home. Dr. Arnold, please? Yes, sir, for these teachings, sir. I'll wait. Pray forgive my husband, Mr. Brown, ma'am. My husband's a private tutor, Mr. Brown. He makes it a rule never to interrupt a class. Very proper, ma'am. Now, let's go. Tell us what you know about our war with the United States. Oh, that thing, sir. Yes, that thing. Well, sir, the colonists didn't like our tea, and so the, there were a lot of skirmishes, but the colonists didn't fight fair and hid behind trees. So our soldiers got disgusted and sailed home. It was very patriotic, Wesker, but inaccurate. You mean to get Klaus Baker? What's the matter with your face? Toothache, sir. Take that toffee out of your mouth. You can call me an untruth, Baker. Remind me to bet you afterwards. Yes, sir. Westcott, perhaps you are better informed about the Second Punic War. Oh, yes, sir. Hannibal crossed the Alps with his elephants, and the Romans came out to meet him. Well, it was odd that you know so much more about something that happened in Italy hundreds of years ago. No, sir, that's history. And our war with the United States. That's just modern, sir. Like an honest English schoolboy, you know nothing about it. No, sir. Well, could, why do we learn history? To find out what the Greeks and Romans did. Someday it may also be thought useful to know what the English and Americans did. Very well, boys. Are you ready, Mary? Mr. Brown has been waiting to see you, Tom. How do you do, sir? I don't think I've had the pleasure. No, sir, you haven't. Brown, sir. Squire Brown, they call me, of Uffington. In the Vale of Whitehorse. We're a large family, we Browns. Not very distinguished, of course, but in our humble way, the backbone of England. Pinch of snuff, sir? No, thank you. No? Capital habit. Pity it's dying out, Mr. Brown. What do we owe the honor of this visit? Oh, yes. You've been very successful here, Doctor. The most successful private tutor in England. Pity your scope is so limited. What has advantages, Mr. Brown? Here in my own school, I have a free hand. I can train boys in my own way, without interference. Did you ever hear of rugby school, Doctor? Naturally. The trustees are looking for a new headmaster. So I've heard. And wherever we go, one name is brought forward. Really? Yes, sir. Yours. Dr. Arnold, I've been sent by the trustees to ask you to stand for election. But that's impossible. But why, dear? The trustees would never accept me. My ideas are too revolutionary. But that's just what we want, Doctor. You know our schools, nurseries of iniquity and vice. We want a revolution. Nonsense, Mr. Brown. English will never want a revolution. Thomas, please. That's right, ma'am. Now you talk to him. I'll step into the garden and admire the azaleas. Oh, Thomas, think of all you could do. But we're happy here, Mary. Our own ways, our own boys. Ten boys. You're giving your life to ten boys. What would I do with three hundred? All the things we've talked about. All your theories and your plans. But they're experimental. They're right. You know they're right. I turn the whole place upside down. Of course you would. If you were headmaster of rugby, you'd you'd change the face of education in England. Three hundred boys, Mary. The youth of England. To teach them to govern themselves. To teach them to love what is right. To mold the most courageous, God-fearing gentleman. Please, sir. What is it? I was to remind you to birch me. <laughs> <laughs> the youth of England, Mary, and each toffee in class. <laughs>
rum, sir, very rum. Rummiest headmaster I ever did see. He isn't going to be a nuisance, is he? We can only hope, sir. But when he opens his mouth, we'll know the worst. I come to a great school where all about us and every association is splendid and elevated. But the schools of England are being criticized. They say that they are corrupted and changed from the likeness of God's image to the likeness of a den of thieves. And it is for us, for you and for me, to remove that reproach. And how shall this be done? You who are boys in our schools today may tomorrow govern a great nation. But those who are to govern others must first learn to govern themselves. Our schools must no longer be based on tyranny. The headmasters, the chief tyrants, and the assistant masters as lesser tyrants. They must be based on the determination of each of us, all just and reasonable beings, to do what is right. And in return for this freedom, I require your confidence. Your confidence and your honesty. Lying and deceit I shall never forgive, for freedom demands responsibility. Those who are oldest and wisest amongst you, the sixth form, will have a special responsibility. Like officers in the army, you will maintain discipline, encourage the weak, and chastise the offenders. But each one of us belongs to a great and a famous school, the reputation of which we are concerned to defend and to improve. And it is for us to show our fellow men that rugby is now no longer a school of savage barbarians, but a school of courageous, God-fearing gentlemen. I'll give him a year. I'll give him six months. Moral principles. What's a schoolboy got to do with moral principles? Feed him one hand, beat the other. That's education. We're safe as houses. With a headmaster like that, huh? You get the lines, I'll get the bait. We're courageous, God-fearing gentlemen, and we're hungry for ducks. Knock him down and box his ears. No more laughing, no more glee. No more sitting on a hardboard seat. The dear headmaster interferes. We'll knock him down and we'll box his ears. Ha, <laughs> you thieving young rascals, you. And there they were, as brazen as you please, a gorging themselves on my fine ducks, what I get four shillings for at market. That's not true, farmer. Oh, yes, it is. You're new here, doctor. You don't know rugby lads like I do. Liars and thieves what have been stealing my ducks and chickens for 20 years. Yes, and a very good thing you must have made out of it, those four shillings apiece. You will be paid no more than the market price. Two shillings. That's all, thank you, Mr. Jenkins. Very good, sir. Once more, and I beg you to consider your answer very seriously. Did you steal those ducks? No, sir. We were never near his place. Fail? No, sir. Green? What? No, but you were all three together this afternoon? Yes, sir. Very well. This is your knife, I believe, Barrington. Your initials are on it. Yes, sir. You dropped it near Farmer Jenkins' duck farm. I told you that it was my passionate desire that the boys of rugby should learn to govern themselves. But I also told you that I would not tolerate lying or deceit. For he who governs himself must be honest in thought, in word, and in deed. But you lied to me. Expulsion is a serious and a lasting disgrace. It brings sorrow to your parents and calamity to yourself. But rugby is greater than any three of its boys. There is no longer any place for you in this school. You did what you thought right. It was right, Mary. It was. 
Those boys were liars, and liars were poison and corrupt. I cannot begin until I got rid of them. There will be more expulsions, more suffering, more misery. Better to have but a hundred boys here, maybe 60, 30, as long as the few are honest, God-fearing, courageous. This is modern education. <laughs> Thank heaven I'm old-fashioned. He'll have to stop soon. There'll be no one left to expel. I thought as you had called a meeting of the trustees, you would like to see what the Times says about you. I have already read it, thank you, Mr. Grimstead. Very awkward, all these letters about your expulsions. Quite a storm of protest. Why, some of them might almost have been written by you, Mr. Grimstead. On the contrary, I have received letters of protest myself. So have I. The failed father, Barrington, left the country. It appears that I am a heartless villain who delights in expelling boys. Ruining their future and breaking their parents' hearts. Perhaps you'll care to read them. But your methods are revolutionary, sir. They are intended to be, Mr. Grimstead. Yes, sir. Someday I'll throw that man downstairs. Old Graham is the least of Mary. Mr. Brown, sir. Good day to you, sir. My respects to you, ma'am. How do you do? Are the other trustees with you? They are not, sir. They express their sentiments by staying away. I'll go. No, ma'am. I want you to hear what I have to say. Will you call the meeting to order, Doctor? Mr. Brown, when I accepted this appointment, it was on the condition that I was to have a free hand. I do not intend to offer my resignation. You are aware, I suppose, that public sentiment is against you. It is not my habit to yield public sentiment. Do you support him in that, ma'am? I do. In that case, it's my duty to inform you, sir, that I'm with you with all my heart. I respect your methods. I admire your courage. I'll back you to the end. That's a very brave attitude, Mr. Brown. Brave, sir? No. Stubborn. We Browns are stubborn and proud of it. And just to show you how stubborn I am, I'm going to send my own son to rugby. <laughs> Goodbye, Master Stone. Goodbye, Jacob. I sent your father off to school. From this very spot I did. Was he very brave? <laughs> oh, bored like a cow. Dashed if I'm going to cry. <laughs> this here pea shooter. Mainly for you myself, I did. It passed his nose at 30 paces. <laughs> Thanks, Jacob. Bye, Nanny. For your cold feet, Master Tom. Thanks, Nanny. You may kiss me just once, but no trimming's mine. Thanks for not saying be a good boy and wash behind your ears and all that. But you will, though. Promise you won't forget. All right, Tom, come on. Goodbye, everybody. Bye. Come back here. Come back here. Suppose the women blubbered over you properly? Nanny was an awful mess. I don't see why, why people can't have more self-control. Quite right, my boy. When we meet the rugby coach, would you mind very much if I don't kiss you when we say goodbye? There might be some other boys. No, just tell you feel. I said the same thing to my father when I went off. So we will just shake hands like two old gentlemen. Thank you, sir. The rugby coach be here directly, sir. Thank you. Bring it up, Tom. Nothing like starting off warm. Excited? Yes, sir. Got the key of your trunk? Yes, sir. Here's a sovereign for you. You may find it useful. Oh, thank you, sir. 
Well, I suppose there's no good giving you advice. Boys never take it. I know I didn't. But you stick to Dr. Arnold. Don't understand half he says, but bless my soul if he isn't on the right scent. I'll do my best, sir. I know you will. Tom. Yes, sir? I don't talk much about it, but... You mean a lot to me. The rugby coach is here, sir. place a very slow only three coaches a day and one of them a two-horse one more like hearse than a coach uh, belongs to the school sir huh? well that's to say i'm a new boy oh i thought as much nice quiet gentleman like you are the other boys pretty wild wild we get into all kinds of rows along the road what with their oaring and their pea shooters and so forth i've got a pea shooter yes i see you have oh they say you'll be as big a varmint as the rest <laughs> Your name Brown? Yes. My father knows your father, and he asked me to take you in charge. My name's East. How do you do? It's a short trunk. Shabby, isn't it? Take it up to my room. Right, sir. Uh, give him sixpence. Sixpence. Look sharp about it all. No more jobs from me. Thank you, sir. Give him your coat. You don't wear them here. Oh, I'm sorry. What's that on your head? A cap. Only loud to wear caps here. But if my friend saw you with that on, I don't know what would happen. New boy needs a hat. I see that, sir. Try that one. Too small. That's Too big. Splendid. How much? Oh, no. Chalk it up. Tea brown. And, uh, burn this. With pleasure, sir. Now, the first thing you've got to learn to do is hang on to your tin. Tin? Money. Oh. I say, you haven't got any tin to spare, have you? Well, my father gave me a sovereign. Splendid. We'll have some Murphy's. Murphy's? Potatoes, young'un. Potatoes. I say, you are green, aren't you? Not a Murphy will you have till I see the color of your money. No money, no Murphy. That's been my motto for 40 years, and I'm not going to change it now. What do you want, Master East? Murphy's, Sally, Murphy's. Your father still owes me for when he was here. We have a sovereign, my good woman. When I see it, I'll believe it. Show her our money, young'un. Go. Don't swallow it. Bring us some Murphy's. Yes, sir. Uh, East. What is it, my boy? This the new fellow? Mm. Nice looking, isn't he? What about introducing us? If you like, brownies and a couple of fourth form pests. The old one is digs and the short one is tadpole. How do you do? Very hungry, thank you. There you are, sir. There's your change, sir. Very hungry. Haven't you got any tin? We're broke. Temporarily embarrassed. Gave our last oven to a beggar. Funny thing, my father owns half of Yorkshire and I can't afford a Murphy. That's a shame, isn't it? East, what is it, young'un? Would it be all right if I got some more for your friend? Would it be all right? Wait. Well, young fellow, that's not a thing which we generally let a new boy do, but uh, seeing that you're a friend of East... Sally, three pennies of Murphy! Six pennies of Murphy! Nine pennies of Murphy! <laughs> Thank you. 
You can explain that to the headmaster. Great pity. Now, what is this disgraceful affair? Who are you, boy? Brown, sir. Brown? I'm the new boy. Oh, yes, of course. Why didn't you report to me before getting into mischief? I didn't know, sir. You realize that you might have done something to a serious injury with this? That isn't mine, sir. I didn't shoot it. Now, come round. Don't begin by telling lies. But I didn't, sir. I tell you, I didn't. What happened? Well, you see, sir, there was a bird. Well? And... Someone aimed at the bird, and suddenly, old Grimey just got in the way. Old Grimey? You mean Mr. Grimston? Well, yes, sir. Then, then everybody suddenly disappeared, and, and there I was with, with that in my hand. I believe you, Brown, because you are your father's son. Because a liar would have told a much more plausible story. Oh, thank you, sir. You wouldn't like to tell me who the someone is who aimed at the bird and brought down Mr. Crimson? No, sir, I couldn't do that. No, I thought not. So you're Squire Brown's son? Yes, sir. This is an important day for you. Yes, sir. An important day for the school, too. A new boy is always important. He may be an influence for good or for evil. Your father once did a very courageous thing, Brown. I know that you won't fail him. Now run along. See if the matron has the keys for your trunk. Yes, sir. Brown. Yes, sir. Remember, from now on, I trust you. Never hurt me by breaking that trust. I promise, sir. Very well. Doctor, that you off all right? Yes, thank you. Tadpole's pretty smart, isn't he? Is he? Of course. If Dr. Arnold had known of the tadpole who did it, he'd have tanned his hide off. Oh. Brown, you didn't say it was tadpole who did it, did you? Oh, no, of course not. Well, that's all right. Remember, my boy, never tell tales. It isn't done. East? Yes, my boy. The doctor's wonderful, isn't he? Doctor? He's all right. Fellows in the sixth form think he's one of the best. I don't take him seriously. Is this your study? Yes, what's wrong with it? Oh, nothing. It's it's wonderful. I'm going to let you share it with me. Uh, give me your key. Oh, do you really mean it? Yes, if you don't hang around me all the time. Don't forget, I can't be seen with a new pillow much. Oh, of course you can't. I promise I won't bother you. Mm, lots of food, all right. Uh, strawberry or raspberry? Strawberry. Looks good. It's very decent of you to put up with me at all. Oh, well, that's all right, young man. I'm only doing it to please my father. He'll be good for a five-pound note when I tell him how decent I've been. Bye! All right, East, you're live. <laughs> <laughs> Why are you so late? Hello, you're new, aren't you? Yes, sir. Well, then it's not your fault. But remember, when a sixth former shouts fag, you run as quickly as you can. Yes, sir. An old rugby custom. You lower school boys have to clean our boots, run our errands, and do anything else we need. Here, he's clean these. All right. 
Is that one of the masters? Masters? Of course not. That's Old Brook, head of our house. How wonderful. Do you think I might clean his boots someday? You can do them now if you want to. Anything to make you happy there, old boy? Oh, thank you. Enjoying yourself, Flashman? <laughs> well, how is this? A uh, new fellow. What's his name? A uh, Brown. Very unusual name. Most distinguished. Welcome to Rugby, Mr. Brown. <laughs> Anytime I can help you, just let me know. You know, that's my food you're eating. We're not complaining. Okay, get a bit stodgy, but it'll do. And remember, when your family sends you more jam, tell them to make it black currant. I don't like strawberries. Oh, and by the way, can you sing? Not very well. Hmm, that's splendid. <laughs> Whatever did he mean? Oh, that. Tonight, singing in hall, and we get a double allowance of beer. New boys have to sing a song on their own. Oh. If you stop, they make you drink salt and water. Ever drunk salt and water? You'll hate it. In Scarlet Town, where I was born, there was a fair maid dwelling. Hey, stop! Well, and you must come, come to on, my... But I didn't stop. Yes, Master, he did. Yeah. Pick it up. Sit down, Flash. But he stopped. I'll decide that. Sit down. Well done, young'un. Now, gentlemen of the schoolhouse, the poacher of Lincolnshire. When I was bound apprentice to famous Lincolnshire, oh, I my master for more than seven years. Flashy, all right. But I didn't do anything. Flashy likes getting his own way. Take my advice, young man, and don't irritate the boys. Doesn't pay. Oh. Well, might have been simpler if you'd have drunk the salt water. Where's Brown? Ah, oh, Mr. Brown, the great vocalist. Ever been tossed in a blanket? I don't think so. Splendid cure for obstinate boys. Take them down a peg or two. Come on, here we go, fellas. Ashley, you take it in. All right, Brown, in you go. Keep your head, Brown, or anything may happen. Put it Brown, that's better. Run the other way. Go and keep a lookout. Oh, yeah, yeah, good grip on it. I say, Mr. Brown, are you coming? Oh, well, here we go, fellas. Yeah, yeah, good boy, fellas. Come on, Brown. Hurry up there. Think you're going to enjoy it, Mr. Brown? Yes. He thinks he's going to enjoy it. <laughs> <laughs> now then, all together. Once, twice, right, and away! Still enjoying it, Mr. Brown? Yes. Once again, I'll do it for him. We're not interested in you. All right. A real one this time. Right. And away! away. And away! And away! <laughs> now then, all together. Ceiling this time. Ceiling you, fellas. One. Right. Right. And away! Doctor! Oh! Get out of here. Keep your mouth shut. Just three, man. I'm sorry, sir. Well done, young man. You didn't do too badly. Oh, thank you, Lee. It's only just twisted. It'll be all right in a minute. See how we do things here? Never tell tales and never give anyone away. Of course, I don't care for flashy either, but telling tales just isn't done, even with him. Well, good night, young man. Good night, Lee. Come in. Good evening, Brooke. May I come in? Oh, I didn't know it was you, sir. I was going to bed. Yes, yeah, so was I. Sit down. I don't suppose you care for a cup of tea. I like them very much. 
Splendid. Schoolhouse match tomorrow? Hmm? Yes, sir. Are you going to beat the rest of the school? We've beaten them for the last six years. Are you going to do it again? I hope so, sir. Thank you. Brooke, tell me, do you suppose there's any bullying going on here? Yes, sir, there is. I can't put my finger on it, but I'm sure it's starting again. Well, I suppose it's only to be expected. Last year, the sixth form wasn't very, it wasn't very strong. But now you're head of the house, Brooke. Yes, sir. And if I catch anybody at it... You'll give them a good hiding and enjoy it, hmm? Yes, sir. I'm afraid it goes deeper than that, Brooke. You and I must build school opinion against bullying so that no boy will stand by whilst another boy is tormented. Who makes your tea? Tadpole, sir. Oh, that is Margaret. He makes the best tea in the house. Mr. Tadpole must come and give my wife a few lessons. Bullying is a tradition in our school. But we must build a new tradition. And that's where I rely on you fellows for the six. Your authority rules the school and your influence sets its tone. It's you who make traditions. That's great responsibility. Nineteen, isn't it? Yes. But we'll stand by you. Yes, I know you will. Well, good night, Brooke. Good night, sir. Don't look too hard tonight, or you won't be much use to your side tomorrow. I won't. And you know, Brooke, when I have confidence in my sixth form, there's no post in England that I would exchange for this one. Thank you, sir. Good night, Brooke. Good night, sir. See, rugby is wonderful, isn't it? Gentlemen, we beat him. Hooray! That large charge of theirs would have carried away a house, but we beat him. Hooray! And why did we beat them? Your play. Nonsense. We beat them because we're proud of the schoolhouse, and we mean to keep it the best house at rugby. Hooray! Now, I'm as proud of this house as anyone, but it's still a long way from what I'd like to see it. There's a deal of bullying going on here, and depend on it, there's nothing breaks up a house like bullying. Bullies are cowards, and one coward makes many. Now, I know a lot of you say, stand by the good old ways, and down with the doctor. Well, let me give you a word of advice. In the first place, they weren't the good old ways. They were the bad old ways. And in the second, down with the doctor is easier said than done. You'll find him pretty tight on his perch, on an awkwardish customer to handle. He doesn't meddle with anyone worth keeping, but look out for squalls if you go your own way, and that way isn't the doctor's. And bullying isn't his way, and it isn't my way, and it isn't the way of any decent fellow in the house. So let's have an end to it. Well, and now I've done blowing you up, and I'll give you a toast. To be drunk with three times three and all the honors. The toast that binds us all together, and those who've been before here, and those who'll come after. To the dear old schoolhouse, the finest house and the finest school in England. <laughs> Oh, 
Oh, uh, hello, Flashman. Oh, uh, hello, Ace. Do these Latin verses for me. I'm, uh... And just why didn't you come when I called? Because you're not in the sixth form and you've got no right to fag us. Oh, I haven't, haven't I? Oh, you leave him alone. <laughs> <laughs> And why must I leave him alone, my little man? Because it's bullying, that's what it is. And Mr. Brown doesn't approve of bullying. No, of course I don't. On second thoughts, you'd better do the verses. A bright boy like you. And do them at once. Must turn them in before third lesson. I'm not going to do them. Oh, don't be an idiot. I'm not going to. Why not? Because Hope Brooks said we should put down bullying. Oh, that's it. And if we give in to them, it just encourages them, and Brooks said about the doctor and everything. Well, if you want to get skinned alive, go ahead. East? Mm-hmm. Do you mind if I don't do them? Are you serious? Yes, I am. And I've got a better idea. Give me the verse. You must make a fool of yourself. At least do it properly. Flashman. Yes, sir? Hey, come here. Yes, sir. This is capital, Flashman. Capital. Thank you, sir. In some of these lines, I see a humility of character I did not think you possessed. Always try to be humble about my work, sir. Excellent. You're only one year behind the pit. This may alter your position. Thank you, sir. Hey, read the last few lines, please. Yes, yes sir. Post ego vesicular scripsi. Sed non ego facei. To me, he pro... Sure. Translate? I'm feeling ill, sir, really I am. Nothing of the sort. Translate? Yes, sir. Ego, I. Scripsy wrote out. These little verses. I did not compose them. <laughs> go on, Flashman, go on. Do not let the vulgar products of the crowd distract you. Yes, sir. Domihi preceptor. Give me, master. Verbra multa, many lashes, pray call, I implore. It will be a pleasure to give you the lashes you request. Come and see me at six. I always feel stronger after tea. You may laugh out loud, gentlemen. <laughs> Brown. Well. You're a great wit, aren't you? Aren't you? No. That's right, you're not. And you're going to old Grimey to tell him it was just a rotten joke, aren't you? No. Do you know what we do to new fellows to get above themselves? No. Is it a fire and hole? You bet there is. Now, Mr. Brown. Are you going to old Grimey? No. Are you going to old Grimey? No, I'm not. Grab me by the heels. E Brown. It has nothing to do with you. Let me go. Let me go. Let me go. Let me go. Now will you give in? No, I won't. Hold him closer. <laughs> Careful, Flash. His clothes are smoking. Hold him closer. Why, you little... Now will you give... He's fainted. Young and feel better now? Yes, thank you. He's fine. Next time, keep out of Flashy's way. He's brave enough. Just a bit green, that's all. I don't think he is so green. Why not? He's made me feel small. Look at us. We've always been scared of the bullies and given in to him. Now a new fellow comes and stands up to him on his own. Yes, and look what it got him. But he didn't give in. That's the point. He didn't give in. 
Listen, everyone. If Brown can stand up to the bullies, why can't we? We could. Of course we could. But we've got too much sense. Don't be a fool. Why, they kick us to pieces. Now, if we stick together, we're five to one. Besides, it'd be worth it. Well, we could put down bullying, just like old Brooks said. We could put it down forever. I wouldn't mind risking a few kicks for that. Nor would I. I wouldn't mind. Ah! It's a fight to the death, then. Fighting's the only thing they understand, and we've got to give it to them. I'm with you. So ah! Anyone else? Put up your hands. What about you? Are you afraid? Who said I was afraid? Up with the fourth ball. Down the tyrant. Hooray for the revolution! Ah! Keep saying easy. It is easy. How? Well, I'll tell you. One of us has got to fight Flashy. Single combat, regular rules, that would stop him forever. That's all. We beat him at outrageous heart. Big, you're a genius. Yes, but who's going to do the fighting? Oh, you, of course. Yeah, me, of course. Why me? You're the biggest. You're the only one that would have a chance against Flashy. Well, I think it's a rotten idea. Nonsense, it's wonderful. All you have to do is to insult him, and then he challenges you, regular rules, and you knock him into little pieces. Did I hear someone mention fisticuffs? Well, my young fellow? Nothing. Splendid. Hello, Dick. <laughs> <laughs> Why didn't you do it? I thought I might kill him. You'll never beat them now. Mr. Freshman, look! You're a coward and a bully and a toady and you smell. Oh, my little rat. Come on! Fair fight, Flashy, fair fight. Regular rules, unless you're afraid. You gotta do it, Flashy, and teach them a lesson. All right, you've asked for it. You get it. Now, come on, you fellas, make a ring. Here, Ashley, your timekeeper. Right. Come on, Brown. Don't take too long about it. I won't. 
time. Good luck, Rom. You'll need it. Come on, Rom. Come on, Rom. One brown, three to one brown, three to one. Seven to two brown, seven to two brown. Taking a long time. Your one chance. Take it easy and let him come to you. Finish him off, Flaxman. He's making a fool out of you. Time. Then he does. Go on. Come on. To you here. The sixth form is expected to stop all fights. Yes, sir. These boys must be punished. Yes, sir. Congratulations, bro. The new tradition is coming along nicely. Tom, you are wonderful. I didn't think so when you first came, but I've changed my mind now. <laughs> Splendid. We'll put it up. Put some hats on them. All right. Eternal friendship. Eternal friendship. Brown, the doctor wants to see you in his study. Have either of you anything to say? Yes, sir. I'm very sorry this happened. But I didn't start it, sir. Are you trying to tell me that Brown did? I'm only trying to be fair. Did you give Brown any provocation? Oh, no, sir. No tormenting or bullying? No, sir. Are you quite certain, Flashman? Absolutely. Very well, wait outside. Thank you, sir. Brown, I'm not going to ask you why you were fighting. I'm satisfied that you would not fight for a cause for which you are ashamed. The rules must be observed. Yes, sir. You knew the rules against fighting. Yes, sir. You were ready to take your punishment. Yes, sir. Very well. How many did he give you? Six of the best. It was worth it. Go on, you're next. Flashman, we have both failed. 
I have failed to influence your character. You have failed to understand that God does not give a man strength to persecute the weak. He who does so is a bully. A bully, sir? I'm not a bully. I've never persecuted anyone. That's no question. You make the mistake of thinking I do not know what goes on in this school. No, sir, I don't, sir. You tormented one of your schoolfellows who was weaker than yourself. I'm not punishing you for that, Flash. There have been bullies in every school, in every community, in every nation. And sooner or later, humble men will rise and throw them down. But I am punishing you because you lied to me. I'm sorry, sir. I didn't mean... You lied, Flashman. Lying is a poison that will corrupt any community. You are a bully, a coward, and a liar. There is no longer any place for you at rugby. You're not expelling me, sir. Oh, no, sir, I'll do anything. Don't expel me, sir. Don't expel me. My father, it'll break his heart. I'll kill myself. I swear I will. I couldn't stand it. Don't expel me, sir. I'll do anything, but please don't expel me. I didn't mean it. Honestly, I didn't. I won't be a bully anymore. I won't. You've got to let me stay. You must. You must. Please let me stay. Please. I can't believe it. Nobody ever tells tales. Something's wrong. It just isn't done. Who else could have? Two minutes after you talked to Dr. Arnold, I'm sick. I can't go home. I can't face my father. You disown me. You disown me, I tell you. Sally, I want the most enormous spread you've ever cooked. Murphy sausages, tea and everything. Shall we celebration? Of course, Auntie. All the fourth warm's coming. Well, who's going to pay? I am. Uh, Effie, I'll help the oven. Bring on the Murphys. Master Brown, you and your friends can eat to your bus. We've got a great camp here at Hammond Show. Yeah. 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 He couldn't beat Flashy in fair fight, but he got his revenge all right. Come on! Keep quiet, you fellows, quiet! What are you getting at? What would you think about a fellow who told tales? You know what we think, but that's got nothing to do with Brown. Oh, yes, it has. Brown couldn't beat Flashy, so he got even with him by telling the doctor about the roasting. That's not true. What do you say? All I know is that your dear little Brown saw the doctor first. And when Flashy went in, the doctor knew all about the roasting. I say, you fellows, Flashy's been expelled. For the roasting, not for the fight. Now perhaps you believe me. Here you are, Master Brown. Fit for a king if I see it myself. Sally, you're oh, marvelous, and you, Effie. Oh, thank you. Thomas, run and tell him it's all ready. Yes, sir. And just tell him about the sausages. They're a surprise. Great day for you, Master Brown. <laughs> it's wonderful, isn't it? Wonderful. I can't believe he'd do a thing like that. But he did, and that's all there is to it. Facts are facts. Come on, East, you can't stick with him now. Flashy got what he deserved. But he never told tales on anyone. Well, let him stick with him if he wants to. Sally, you'll have to put them in the oven again. Well, I can't keep putting them in and taking them out. Oh, of course you can't. Effie, trot off and tell them to hurry up. Yes, Master Brown. Where are the others? They aren't coming. But why not? Because you wouldn't listen to good advice. I tried to help you, young'un, but you went your own way and now you're in for it. East, what has happened? Remember I warned you that we don't tell tales? Yes. Well, now do you know why they aren't coming? It's... You saw the doctor before Flashman. Yes. And when you came out, he knew all about the roasting. It isn't true. Flashman Stack, that proves it. The others don't think I told. What else can they think? They can't think that. They can't. You don't think that. You don't, do you, East? You don't. It doesn't much use to me any longer. Waste of good Murphy's. 
I felt it is. Oh, come on, cheer up, Monster Brown. Eat them yourself. We'll help you. Well, we have things. Of course, honey. It's a funny thing. It's the first time I ever tasted one of my own Murphy's. Yes, Monster Brown. It's not that I don't like you, Murphy. I just don't feel like it. Effie, there are a pack of cruel things in this world, but there is. What you up to? Nothing. You put this letter in the post. Thomas Brown, Esquire. Yes, Mr. Brown. They wrecked his room, ma'am, and he feels uncommon miserable about it. He wouldn't try to run away. Looks that way to me. I've seen it happen before, ma'am. Thank you, Thomas. I know all about that, Tom. Let's clear it up, shall we? Poor Tom. But this sort of thing has happened before, you know. There was a boy before you came who was ragged like this. He ran away. It wasn't very brave of him, was it? No, ma'am. It hurt Dr. Arnold terribly. Mrs. Arnold. Yes, Thomas? Is, is it being a coward to give in when everyone's against you? Dr. Arnold had everyone against him once, but he didn't give in. And then your father did a very brave thing, and that helped him. I expect the Browns have always been pretty brave, haven't they? Yes, ma'am. Tom, dear. Dr. Arnold and your father are very proud of you, you know. And if you ever did anything cowardly, well, like that other boy did, it would have hurt them terribly, wouldn't it? I expect it would. Dr. Arnold would think that he'd failed your father. Mrs. Arnold, he mustn't feel like that. I couldn't let him feel like that. No, of course you couldn't. Everything's all right now, isn't it? Yes, ma'am. Mrs. Arnold. Yes, Tom? You knew I was going to run away, didn't you? Yes, I knew. You won't tell Dr. Arnold. No, dear. It'll be just between us. Thank you, ma'am. I gave your letter to Sally. She'll put it on the couch. My letter. My letter! Has 
my letter gone? Oh, surprise. Has my letter gone? Of course, I put it on a coach not five minutes ago. Oh, Jiminy. But didn't you want it to go? Oh, of course I did, but I don't know. Why not? Well, it was to my father, and there was something awful in it about the doctor because I was paying to do something, but I've changed my mind, and I must get that letter back. How? Oh. Or oh, go off to the coach, of course. But how? Oh, I don't know. Yes, I do. But that's my auntie's card. Well, I'm going to borrow it. Dr. Brown. It's a matter of life and death. Oh, I couldn't stand by and see you take it. But if I was to turn my back... Thanks, Effie. Three people saw a rugby boy drive my cart like mad, and my poor mare will probably never recover her win. Is that all? Yes, sir. Very well. Any damage will be paid in full, of course, Mrs. Harrow. Thank you, sir. That is, if it was one of our boys who stole your car. Thomas, see if any boy is missing from the dormitories. Yes. You're going to search... Thomas, uh, take Mrs. Harrow with you. Locked out. It's very sad. Suppose we better get him in. How? Well, for that matter, why? It's too risky. If it were one of us, it would be different. took Sally's cart. Sally's cart? She doesn't know it's me, but she's been to the doctor and she's furious. So I saved your hide. It was jolly decent of you. After everything. After what? After all the awful things you thought about me. I well, don't think I've changed my mind. I'm not interested in you or anything about you. I never want to see you again. If you ever tell the others I was fool enough to help you, I'll bash your head in. Don't be so calm about it. He'll tell the doctor and I'll get to blame. Then all you've got to do is go to the doctor and tell him it was me. But I can't do that. You know I can't. I'm afraid you've got to because I'm not going to own up. We'll make you. Oh, no, you won't. You'll have to tell tales. Then they'll all turn against you as they have against me. Then you'll know what that feels like. Beautiful swine. It'll do you good. But please, please remember the facts. Last night you were out of your dormitory. Yes, sir. Last night, a cart was stolen. Yes, sir. 
Last night, a rugged boy was seen driving that car. Yes, sir. Were you that boy? No, sir. You stole the car, didn't you? Yes. Then go to the doctor and tell him you did. Let East tell him. You know he won't. None of us will tell him. Except you. Are you going to the doctor? No, I'm not. You refuse to give me an explanation? Yes, sir. You realize that without an explanation, I'm compelled to believe that you are lying? Yes, sir. You know the punishment for lying? Yes, sir. Very well. You have courage, East. And few liars have courage. Oh, no! It's no good. But I'll leave him alone. No! <laughs> Thing that boys will do, and a thrashing would be enough. But a boy who lets his friend be blamed for what he himself has done, he is a mean, despicable coward. But East didn't do that. No, Mary, it's worse than that. I've seen Sally and that girl has. There is no possible doubt. The boy that I must expel is Tom Brown. you could make him tell. Now you know how we do things here. <laughs> Son, he must have been the symbol of my success. Now he's the symbol of my failure. Not your failure, one boy's failure. My failure, Mary. He came to rugby with every promise. Rugby has made him a coward. If I failed with him, what of the others? I cannot reach any of them. Well, there's no use, Mary. I cannot go. I have deceived myself. I shall apologize to East, Spell Brown. And then I must resign. I heard you, Tom. Eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. It's a record. And serves him jolly well right. You don't like Brown, do you? No, I don't. I hear you think he told about Flashy. Everyone knows he did. Now, you young fellows jump to conclusions. As a matter of fact, it was you who told. I did. At the fight. Give him one for the roasting. I heard you. And so did the doctor. Well, Master Brown, did he hurt you very much? Yes, he did. Funny thing was, he was so cheerful about everything. Brown, we seem to have made a mistake. I'm awfully sorry. So am I. I'm we wouldn't have done it. Well, I'm not. You may be all right, but I very much doubt it. This is a big school, Brown. The less we see of each other for the next four years, the better. Sorry, young man. But I'd probably feel the same if you made me go through all that torture. Nearly getting expelled's no joke, you know. But he'll get over it in time. 
I wonder. You come as quickly as you can. That'll run be custom. Yes, sir. Yeah. Clean these. Very well. Gentlemen of the schoolhouse, when I first came here, my father told me to stick by the doctor. And let me tell you, we had a powerful lot of enemies, and it wasn't everyone who understood him. But I haven't got to tell you to stick by the doctor. <laughs> You're all with him. The whole school's with him. And there isn't anyone who doesn't know that he's the finest headmaster in England. <laughs> and when you get to know him, the finest friend. He's strong and he's wise and he's true. And when I leave rugby tomorrow, there's one person I'll always remember. Yes, and if I'm not mistaken, the world will remember. Arnold of Rugby. <laughs> Not in your chair. I'll sit over here. I hope you're feeling better, sir. A little tired, Tom. End of term. You finished your packing for tomorrow? Not quite, sir. Sad at leaving. Of course, sir. Oh, we all feel the sad in last night. But you must look forward, Tom. Oxford next term. You find Bradley at Oxford. You remember Bradley? And Fenton. <laughs> the number of flashings I gave that boy. Here's Douglas. He's in the army now in India. And Brooke. He was your hero, wasn't he, Tom? Yes, sir. He'd be very proud of you. Harris. Poor old Harris. He's doing quite well, Tom. And Pickering. He's in the foreign office. To make a fine statesman. So many boys. And now you're going out into the world. God bless you, Tom. Oh, by the way, we just had an attack of spring cleaning, and this turned up. I think I can trust you with it now. Good night, Tom. Good night, sir. Master Ashley, Coach Money to Lincoln, one pound ten, sir. You are. Thank you. Master Tanner, Coach Money to London, one pound five. It's a true doctor, Arnold Bill. Don't you count on it, sir. He'll be back here next year beating you as hard as ever. <laughs> Come in. The last coach will be leaving directly, sir. Yes, Tom. Will you be saying goodbye to the young gentleman? Of course. Give me my cap and gown. No, dear, please. You're not well enough. I've known to saying goodbye to the boys, Mary, since I came to Rugby. I do wish you wouldn't go. The boys are happy. I don't want them to know that I'm ill. There's a doctor.
Goodbye, Alexander. Remember to your father. Goodbye, well, that's the last of rugby. Oh, no, it ain't. You owe me six and six, you owe me one pound ten. Hello, Mr. Bell. Hello, Mr. Goodbye, Ashley. I hope you have a nice holiday. Goodbye, sir. Goodbye, East. I'm sorry you're leaving us. So am I, sir. We didn't agree at first, but now we understand each other perfectly. Yes, sir. You're going to Cambridge? Yes, sir. And Brown going to Oxford? Yes, sir. It's still different from Brown. Don't you think it would be a good idea if you two fellows shook hands before you left Bradford? Goodbye, sir. Goodbye. Another year, sir? Another year. Funny thing, sir. Boys comes and boys goes. But we goes on forever.